Welcome back. We are joined now by Mark Griffith, the Executive Director for the South Central Minnesota EMS. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for And here to kind of talk about a serious topic. And um, you guys really are in need of um, workers and we, employees. We are, absolutely. And it uh, it runs the gamut across our region. It uh, You know, you can go as far south as Keystone and as far north as, as uh, Winthrop or, or Gaylord. And uh, if you throw a dart at a map, those folks need help. Mm. Yeah, so let's kind of go into what exactly your needs are. Well, the, you know, for, for an ambulance to get out the door to actually go pick somebody up that needs help and take them somewhere, you have to have EMTs, right. for sure. Um, and EMT, you know, below that you have EMRs, emergency medical responders, can, you know, kind of, a, 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 you know, the next level down from EMT, they can do a lot of things, but they can't necessarily do everything an EMT can do. And, of course, drivers, you know, we have to have somebody that can, uh, can drive our equipment to where we got to go. And anyone can do this. Um, just proper training is all you need, yep, right? Yep. And a lot. And the neat thing is, is a lot of services will will either pay for the training in full or mm -hmm. help you offset some of those costs. So, it's uh, it's just it's a wonderful way just to kind of test the waters and see if it's for you. And so, what is the um, I guess, you know, what is the age range that you're looking at? You know, because I feel like there's um, a lot of people, you know, out there that, you know, have always kind of wanted to do it, mm -hmm. you know, and had kind of like an inkling, like, oh, I could do that. Yeah. Um, but what is the age range on that? You know, it really goes from like 18 is when most people, you know, would, would get into EMS, you know, mm -hmm. either right at, at, right at the end of high school or, or, or right at, you know, right after. Um, but we've had folks in their 80s that still run in the field with us. Mm -hmm. You know, we have folks that, that do entire careers and they retire in their 60s and they think, why not? Why not do this? And, and like, why not, you know, like mm -hmm. do something completely different, right? Apt. And change the pace and help, and help, you know, um, a really like one of the most important things, you know, it's saving people's lives, you know, to be a part of that, I think is um, extremely crucial and important. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, uh, and, and, and it's interesting you bring that up about, you know, people will have entirely different careers. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the folks that are in our region are volunteers. They mm -hmm. have different careers. They are accountants, they are electricians, they are farmers. Um, and they do this on the side. They do this when they can. And um, so even if they're not willing to give up, you know, being a TV reporter just necessarily, mm -hmm you can still do that and, and volunteer sure. in EMS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so are, is it all volunteer or is it paid, is there paid volunteer jobs? Mm -hmm. How does that all work? Yeah, th it, it's, a, it's a pretty healthy mix out okay. there. Most of our agencies will pay a, a stipend, a per diem, to sure. come down and, and carry a pager around for a set amount of hours or you get paid so much when you go actually out into the field on a call. Um, and clearly we have services that will take on people, you know, full or part time. Um, here in Mankato, you know, we have Mayo Clinic and, and Alina's in our region, North Memorial, those are certainly you know, if you're looking for just a, a outright change in your career, those are mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful outlets for that. Yeah, what would you say is the current the current status compared to years past? Is the, the need kind of greater than ever, or what, what are we seeing right now? It really is. It, uh, you, know, you know, right now we're, you know, most of our ambulance services are hanging on by a thread. Mm -hmm. They are one or two people away from not being able to go on calls. And that's scary. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's really scary. I mean, you, especially if you have three or four services that are next door to each other that do that, that starts a domino effect. Right. And we could, we could wipe an entire county's response capability out in and just so a matter that, of weeks. That l when you say like uh, uh, taking away a response capability, that is in other, in other words saying like somebody's not going to get the life-saving need the life-saving help that they need in moments where they need it the most. Absolutely. Right, that's what that domino effect looks like. Absolutely, you know, if we, you have communities that uh, right now can have, uh, you know, if somebody needs help, they can have an ambulance and a crew to your door in, you know, five or six minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, that crew goes away. Um, then you're looking at double, even triple that time for mm -hmm. someone to get there to, to try to help. Let's talk about how people can get started in this process if they're interested. Sure, we'll make it really easy. Um, you can uh, you can contact your local ambulance service, your local fire department, um, and they will guide you in the right direction. If you don't want to do that, contact me. I will absolutely take you. I will absolutely introduce you to anybody you want to know in EMS. All right. Thanks so much for Thank being you. here today. Thanks for having us. And we'll have more when we come back on Cato Living.